This is the story of Palani and Hainit. Two tired three college roommates got selected for GSOC 2023. What's interesting is that they didn't have a clue of open source until July of 2022. It started with us really getting tired by just doing DSA and just working on some personal projects. They were simply doing DSA problems on lead code hoping to get interviews. So what inspired them to drop DSA all together and focus on open source? We like really wanted to gain some industrial experience and the easiest way forward was like diving into open source. In this interview, they talk about their step-by-step -step process which helped them crack GSOC as beginners. You really uh, can't not know anything and start diving into that project. You ha have to have some background with the tech stack. They even shared the secret with me which helped two beginners contribute to big open source projects. It's just about, I would say, uh, consistency. This interview is a masterclass if you want to crack GSOC and contribute to open source with no prior experience. I am Sanskar and you're watching The Sanskar Show. Taking a step back, can you please also tell the audience like how did you get introduced to open source and you know why did you get interested and thought to dabble with open source? It started with us really getting tired by just doing DSA and just working on some personal projects. We like really wanted to gain some industrial experience and the easiest way forward was like diving into open source uh, and like getting our credibility public as well at the same time. So yeah, uh, so we started to find the easiest way into uh, open source was GSOC I suppose and so we started to find GSOC organizations. Uh, and we stumbled on stumbled upon many like Joplin, Mozilla, uh, and but uh, the most that we resonated was with uh, Rocketchart, since it's like the world's uh, uh, largest open source collaboration platform, and uh, we loved collaboration uh, and dealing with real time stuff. So yeah, that's how it all started for us. You mentioned that you checked upon a variety of projects, organizations, and then you decided that Rocket Chat is something which you resonate with. So what did you like about Rocket Chat? And did you know the tech stack first, or you just wanted to learn the tech stack on the go and made sure the project say that we will learn about it? There is no possible way that you will know everything about uh, hmm. an organization's tech stack or even a, a sub project under that organization. Uh, that is a tech stack. Like it's really difficult to uh, learn right. everything and then start contributing, right? So uh, yeah. So to answer your question, like uh, it's not like we just started with development when we started open source. Mm -hmm. We were okay. doing development since around an year before that. Yeah. So now that you are in open source for almost ten months and a year, how does it is a newbie? to start contributing to open source and get involved with the space. You really uh, can't not know anything and start diving into that hmm. project. Right. You ha have to have some background with the tech stack. And usually the tech stack is mentioned uh, in the readme of the project, like what they're using, their, uh, like their architecture, uh, at least uh, really good organizations that want contributions. Uh, at least they mention this very well. So Hinitya, what stood out to me about both of you was you both of you got selected in the same organization. So I want to ask you, do you feel that as you were roommates and you both were contributing to the same organization, you got to share notes and you know you could collaborate better being roommates in real world? Like, uh, I, see, the thing is, I won't say only OSS, but if we are together, uh, I think we we are able to solve like any problem that comes across us. Like it's it's not just about OSS. It's it's about our friendship, right? Many of the people just think it's uh it's it's competition and all. I, I can really understand like these are the very important aspects of um, two people uh, wants to you know uh, getting somewhere. But if uh, if like if he it, as just Palani said like it's it's not about us being like coming to OSS, then after that we started collaboration. It's uh, it's about it's it's before that, right? When we made that project for our club, it's hmm. uh, it yeah. was not like we we are about to get something or something like that. 
which we just we just had fun working together we, we like we liked it like so like that is that is from where the collaboration comes from that is what that is i would say the habit of collaborating it's it's not like uh, uh, if you are doing better i i would be you know uh, in oss if you are doing better i would be competing with yourself and i would try to get ahead of you but instead i can hmm. get your support and i can learn from you right so that, this is what works for us like sometimes i help him sometimes he help him we just share our notes behind the scenes right. in the same organization communicating and stuff so that all helps uh, us right collaboration is is the key to open source i would say and it has helped us a lot to grow right getting into open source as a beginner sometimes can be overwhelming right you have to go through large code bases you have to communicate with people from different time zones so did you face any problems when you initially got introduced to open source doing any task for the first time you will face problems right like uh, diving into a world where it's not you really maintaining the project but there's someone else that maintains the project as a whole team you have to collaborate with them uh, and then get their suggestions and then work on that particular issue or uh, a pull request so yeah it was uh, definitely difficult starting out but as soon as we like uh, even uh, like we started attending twitter spaces in which mm-hmm. like very initially this was so over there people guided us like how to get started and uh, it's really like you can find this in- information anywhere uh, like uh, there are awesome uh, people like kunal gushwaha etc uh, eddie jao so uh, they give these uh, basic guidelines Uh, but what you do with these guidelines is upon you it's it's completely upon you so yeah people suggested that you have to reach out to the maintainers uh, you have to attend community meetups and uh, you actually have to collaborate with others uh, so uh, at the start it'll be d- difficult but as time progresses uh, it'll get much more fun to collaborate and working on a real project so it's just about i would say uh, consistency like uh, the thing is if you are mm-hmm. like consistent if you are like working on a problem and uh, like like if you start if you like start it uh, with the maintainers when you start it you will face some problems the code base is not really that you have expected it it can be something like that because the project that we make and the ecosystem the oss ecosystem how things work that can be like completely different because many of the people are just collaborating over them there and it's it's not like you only working on the project it's like thousands of people are working on the same project so that may get difficult but like once you make maybe a small change maybe a small suggestion i i remember i uh, like rocket chat is a, the the main server is a as a big repo but uh, like initially i just only made a, a line of change but that was very significant and was solving a problem so for that i had to write a bigger mm-hmm. explanation and like many of the people connected to me on that same explanation we discussed and i also gave uh, get some view points so i think with consistency you you consistently engage with the community and that makes things like very easy you get familiarized with the code base and things go smoother you then you become consistent <laughs> awesome and what was your like initial approach to the project like when you first got introduced to rocket chat what were the steps you took like did you go to the code base did you just start with an issue at the very first moment so what was like your initial approach to the project i would say like we started uh, okay so as i mentioned i was not expecting a code base like that i expected like yeah it's a electron app one one side of the react and one side of uh, uh, one side of the react and one side of the electron itself that uh, and some ipc barriers over there some functions might be defined we are expecting like that but that thing was different <laughs> that thing was completely different it was <laughs> made on it was made on the it was made on the flux pattern and uh, uh, like completely unexpected thing but like we decided okay whatever it is however it is uh, we know some things we we know how to understand the code at least we know typescript 
we know react and we know the basic how things work so it's not like you know just let's not be afraid of the big chunks of word we will do it and mm, we can do it right so we just got stuck to the code base whatever line we come across we will try to understand it well if you go for a big code base that can be that doesn't make sense because you cannot understand a big big lines of things but the thing is if you have this much confidence then that can also help you make a pr right and after you make a pr mm-hmm. your confidence is go from this to this right so like we just explored a small part of the code and uh, yeah i would say the small part of the code that mostly covered the downloads the settings and some good chunks of it and then we then we moved ahead it it gave us a very good back and we were able to like make seven pr in a week with some really good changes mm, okay so it's it's like we we both used to like sit together and just okay yeah let's read it what is it written mm. and just you know just explore upon it okay. how did you like sort of learn while contributing like do you feel that contributing to rocket chat has somehow sped up your learning process and taught you how to learn better of course like uh, uh so as i said uh, you would have some basic background upon the tech stack you're working on like but there's no chance you'll know everything uh, so uh, after the electron repository like after we made some contributions or that uh, we reached out to the coo of the company uh, he's a really awesome mentor uh, and he's my current uh, gsoc mentor as well uh, so we reached out to him he gave us two separate uh, projects uh, to work upon so i worked upon rc4 community which was basically a, a full stack component library for community builders and henet worked upon the github integration with rocket chat uh, so both we had no clue about the tech stack being used there like i was familiar with next years but i didn't really have much experience with it and uh, there was things like graphql being used there were mm-hmm. things like uh, uh, fauna db etc like there were so many moving parts and i was completely overwhelmed and i suppose that was the same case with henet so uh, you got to talk to the maintainers like they were working on that project uh, before us so they would have a lot of experience so we asked them what would be the best resources to learn this from so they pointed us to documentation tutorials etc and this would uh, differ for each and everything there is no fixed site that you go over here you can learn right. everything there are so many different medium blocks that you have to go through and there are issues that you won't even find in stack overflow that you have to go into the main frameworks code base like for instance uh, i was uh, facing a bug with uh, the authentication library that we were using uh, next talk so Uh, it's a very huge library uh, a lot of people use it and i found a bug with uh, while integrating rc4 like uh, rocket charts auth with google auth via nx dot so i went upstream and then i had to fix that port base first and i had to make a pr over there and after that got solved i came back and integrated that so uh, you you have no idea uh, how things are going to work out but uh you learn a lot basically when you actually dive in so uh yeah that's how there are no fixed resources that you can go to and right. learn it right and so you quit dsa in july 2022 right now we are one year down the line and you must have expected something out of open source and you know why you quit dsa because you felt it was somehow boring or you were not getting the kick out of it So one year down the line do you feel that you have achieved what you wanted to in open source and it's an exciting field for you and how's this one year been like Yeah like we got something more than we expected uh, I would say like uh, firstly when we started open source it was uh, it was like okay uh, let's 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 uh, let's dive into gsoc and we'll clear gsoc and yeah all good things right one organization one focus right that's all but it was not like that honestly it was like a tree right so one branch and then open up some more and then open some open up some more okay right? kind of like that so with with rocket chat we uh, with rocket chat like you know 
uh, I tell you something like with Rocket Chat and Apache Develop parallelly, uh, it was not like we went through Apache Develop from Rocket Chat. So with Rocket Chat, we got into Git pod uh, con- continuously because uh, luckily Singly uh, our CEO gave uh, like uh, Palini an opportunity to you know explore Git pod and all. Then after I uh, after that. As I said, how we collaborate, Falini t- talked to me about Gitpod and we like both started mm-hmm. collaborating. Yeah, okay, let's explore the community and all. Gitpod was uh, really awesome with like that community and even same goes for Apache Develop as well. So uh, like there are a ton of opportunities. You just have to know how to make the uh, right connections at the right time. So uh, like while Gitpodifying the project, uh, uh, the the RC4 community project that I was working on. Right. Uh, I uh, talked to the Gitpod maintainers as well, and then uh, like we are now Gitpod heroes. Like after Gitpoding, finding some projects and contributing to that uh, organization a bit, uh, they actually made us Gitpod heroes. So that uh, so uh, in short, we get uh, a lot of uh, free credits to use <laughs> Gitpod. Uh, so. That is really awesome. And uh, we recently even made a, a really cool extension for Gitpod. Uh, maybe we can share a video to it. So it basically enables single click workflows with Gitpod uh, from your desktop. So uh, it had a completely different tech stack as well. So uh, as we said, right. uh, you just have to keep learning, keep learning, keep talking with people, keep communicating. That's awesome. awesome. And what do you feel, according to both of you, got, helped you got into GSOC? And like, was it your contributions? What is was it your relations with the maintainers? What helped you get into GSOC? To be honest, we don't know. <laughs> like, uh, it it was a combination of everything, I suppose. Uh, you have to have uh, hard work. You have to have luck. Luck is a very important thing, uh, and you have to be consistent, as Hanit mentioned a lot of times, and you have to have a good relationship with the maintainers. And it's not like uh, you just are talking to the maintainers consistently and not really making any contributions. Uh, just uh, that won't help you. Uh, so, right. Uh, right. So uh, there is no guarantee uh, with uh, GSOC, to be honest, but uh, while you approach GSOC uh, or any other uh, open source uh, uh, program like this, you for sure would open up a ton of more opportunities along the way. So yeah. even like even in Rocket Chat, uh, for the people who didn't get, uh, get selected in uh, GSOC, uh, they are still contributing. Uh, they they still are contributing with us right now, and uh, uh, we actually have weekly session mentorship uh, mentorship uh, sessions uh, in which rocket chat uh, engineers come and teach a lot of different technologies like uh, recently this uh, uh, saturday we had a session on uh, deep dive into docker by one of our awesome engineers Deepu. Uh, so a lot of gsockers and non gsockers who didn't get selected but are still passionate about contributing to open source. They came in, they learned, we had a lot of fun. So, uh, uh, like getting into GSOC shouldn't be your only aim. Like, it's it's an awesome program for sure. But you will learn, like you will open up opportunities for you during this organization. Do the right things. Of course.